Hello everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So today we're going to talk about four axis roughing using the Bobcat four axis standard software. And in this example, uh, well, let's take a look at what we got here. So let's blank out our tool path. Let's hide our stock model. I believe this file, this came over from a customer on the West Coast. Uh, it looks like they're running maybe 25 or 26 and uh, there's this shape here that they want to machine using their four axis okay now if we take a let me just change the color of this a little bit if we take a look at our stock here you can see that we're running on some rectangular stock or square okay and if we look at our rotary tool path you can see that we're roughing it out it's actually taking um, it's taking more than one pass to step down and if we edit the feature here and we look at here we go six passes quarter inch a pass okay now when we do that you can see down in this section here how the tool is all the way down into the part so in this case we're really not roughing it out from that rectangular stock it's more like a semi finish or an offset of that path so uh, it's a little bit of a problem here we're cutting a bunch of air and here we're burying the tool into the material so how do we handle this well if you're running the version 28 software we have a trim to stock option that would eliminate this problem okay so uh, I'm gonna review that later in this video but if you don't have the version 28 software what are your options here well your options would be to rough the part out in three axis first okay so how do we do that well the first thing that we would need to do is create some index systems or at least some planes that we can pick for our index systems so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a right view and I'm gonna go to a side UCS and I'm going to draw a rectangle alright so let's just make it nine and nine okay I uh, looks like the center line of the part is slightly off center but again for this example that would be fine all right so we have this shape here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude this shape I'm gonna take the caps off and I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit uh, let's go to that should be fine that should be fine for this example okay so now I have this box on every different face okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new setup I go to uh, I go to a top location so I'm gonna create I'm gonna create a new setup so insert setup I'm gonna edit its location its location I'm gonna make it um, you know right here where, where it was before so that's fine okay now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add an index system and then I'm gonna pick a surface and this surface is gonna be my index system now you can see how it's pointing the wrong way so what I'm gonna do is reverse this and make sure it's pointing up so there's one index system I'm gonna create another index system I, you could either do two or three or or four it just depends in this case I'm going to do let's say two index systems one for that side and one for this side and again I want to make sure that arrow is pointing out so we will reverse that and there you go so I have one index system here and then I have another index system on the bottom there okay so now what I'm gonna do is those surfaces that I created here these were really just used to um, give me a face to pick for the index system but I'm going to uh, move this geometry over alright so let's um, let's move this blue geometry 
over to its own layer. All right, and then let me extract some geometry. Make it green for this face and for that face. Okay. All right, now, so we have two index systems, one for the top, one for the bottom. In the top one, I'm going to do mill three axis. I'm going to select the whole model. I'm going to select my uh, boundary to contain the cutter. And cutting strategy is just going to be a Z-level rough. And, okay, so now if we compute this, whatever the defaults are, I mean, you, you can always adjust your step down and step over. Uh, we'll leave some stock for finish. I'll go ahead and compute this. So, um, if we just compute it the way that it is, you're going to see how the tool is going all the way down to the bottom. And I don't want the tool to go all the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to edit a level. So I'm going to say bottom of job uh, minus four. And I will recompute. And then that will go halfway down. So now I'm going to go to this next one here. And. Uh, I'll copy this feature and I'll paste it. I will select my model as my geometry. I will select my boundary. I'll recompute. All right, so now you can see that this has gone down to that level as well. So I'm pretty close. It looks like it needs to go a little deeper. So I'm just going to adjust this, uh, this level here. So we'll say minus four and a quarter for that one. which looks a little bit closer. And then this one, I'm going to say uh, minus four and three quarters. Just make sure that it goes past. Okay, so it looks like we've cleared out all that material. So we've done this in three axis roughing. So we can run this roughing routine first. And now that we've roughed out the part, then we can come back to this rotary tool path here. Okay, and instead of running all these finish passes, we can just say take one pass, and then now we can uh, finish it. So we can rough in three axis, and then we can use the rotary tool path to uh, finish with your four axis. Okay, so that's one of the ways that you can attack this if you're using version 27 or 6 or uh, version 25. Um, that's how we can approach this. Let me let me cancel out of this uh, this feature here. All right. So now let's look at doing this another way. So I'm going to just blank this one out. Uh, blank. Okay. I'm going to create a new job. This will be with a four-axis mill. Oh, I could be on a uh, router as well, but we're going to set up our our stock here. And then let me just make sure I'm facing the right way. So we'll pick our origin. Now, one of the things that I want to do while I'm here, let me, uh, let me, uh, I want to grab this bounding box that's being displayed right now. Uh, and uh, so I can use some of the information on it. So I'm going to select all except for that thing and I'll just do control V and then I'll move this thing over here and I'll choose OK create a new layer edit paste and the reason why is I, I need to know what what this distance is here so I can measure that point right there and that's four four point three six six okay so I'm gonna use that for my base point when I do my rotary Okay, so I have my I have my stock set up. I have my part set up. So let's go ahead and run the four-axis rotary. I'm going to select all my geometry here. I'm going to use a ball mill. Okay, that uh, base point that I was talking about, this is the distance from the machine setup, which was on top of the part, down to the center line. So this would be minus 4.366. Um, this will be a, a long, which is fine. We'll do a zigzag so we cut in two directions. I'm going to make this five 
uh, the step angle and I'm going to go ahead and compute and this will give me my uh, like finish pass okay so you can see how this is following around the part now if you're familiar with the rotary uh, if I know the length I can tell it the start position and end position of the um, of the tool path uh, so that it doesn't go uh, that far so I can measure you know where this point is and in X this is minus uh, 4.323 okay so if I don't want it to roll over this edge or to roll over that edge there if I come back into here and I go to start is gonna be minus 4.323 and end is gonna be 0 and I recompute the tool path will be mm, uh, this was an absolute, I was close here, so uh, I, I got this wrong. This would be, that number there. <laughs> All right, so that looks better. So now, you know, you can adjust your start and end points. All right, let me blank, um, let me blank the stock out for just a second turn this other stuff off okay so that gives us that gives us our tool path now what's different about the version 28 software is that when you do the trim to stock option so if we come back in here and we edit this and then we do trim to stock and then we can say number of passes you know 20 spacing I'm going to just make the spacing larger. So I'm going to say 20 passes at this value and trim it to the stock. I'm going to go ahead and recompute this. What we're going to see is that it's going to offset like it was before, but it will it will offset all the way up to the stock shape and then it will trim away at the stock shape. Or at least that's what I'm expecting it to do. So let's give it a chance to calculate and we'll find out uh, how we look. Okay, there we go. Now you'll notice how let me look at this from a right view. You can see how the tool path is going to go all the way out to the stock shape. So it's clearing all the, it goes out further here where the corner is. And then you can also see that there's nice and even and consistent passes. So before where the tool was getting buried um, down in this section here, we're not going to see that uh, being the case. So let's uh, run it through a simulation. All right, so we can see how it's roughing down this geometry. So it index and then it works its way down, indexes, works its way down, you know, and it's going to go all the way around the part, roughing this shape out. So we're no longer burying our cutter. Uh, what do we got going on there? I think that's just the the uh, amount of shank or uh, flute flute length that I have showing there is, is probably what that is. But you can see it's doing a nice job stepping down roughing this out, working its way around. So by using the trim to stock option, we can rough it with our fourth axis without having to set up the index systems. And if you have your proper tooling uh, with your flutes defined and your, your hangout correctly, then we, we wouldn't see all this, uh, this gouging here. But all right, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, uh, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next one. If you like the video, let's get a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please comment below. See you in the next one, guys.